So with my action sequence kind of roughed out, um, normally in the pre, everything I did prior to this, I would just edit it right in Unreal because um, it was easy. I didn't have a lot of cuts to deal with and it was faster than going into an editing program. But in this case, there was a lot of edits. I wanted to see how the EDL round trip into Premiere worked. So what I did in this case was I created a bunch of cameras for each of the characters. So you can see I have uh, close, medium, and wide cameras for Baby Yoda, close, medium, and wide for the agent, and uh, like the intro camera, and somewhere around here, a couple B-roll cameras, just for anything I thought I might want to cut to during the, during the edit. So if we take a look at one, say Baby Yoda medium, you can see I have the action sequence here. And then essentially I just have this sort of, for the entire length of the entire uh, action sequence, which is the, everything that happens in the apartment, I just have this medium camera sort of pushing in, pushing out wherever I think it might um, be, make sense. And again, this is pretty rough. I don't try, try to perfect it at this point. Um, and then I do that for all the cameras. Then I render out all those cameras from Unreal and uh, as QuickTimes and just using ProRes. And then I pull them into Premiere, which is where I do the editing. So this is the entire short film in Premiere. Um, that's the little section you guys saw. And this particular stuff here, this, this is all the editing I did with those original cameras. So you can see like just cutting from like medium to wide to, to medium, flipping over to Baby Yoda. So essentially, again, I won't do it, you know, hardcore perfection editing at this point. I'll just basically block out the edit the way I'm imagining it. Uh, and then occasionally dropping in little bits of sound effects and sound just to make sure that the, the pauses and the timing and all that kind of stuff is generally there. Then I will output this edit as an EDL from Premiere and then go back into Unreal and import that. And that generally creates this, uh, this, this sequence and it reassembles uh, that edit from Premiere. So I have the entire piece uh, at least for the apartment, all in one sequence uh, and all the edits. Now, this is where it gets really fun because um, now I can go in and fine tune everything to my heart's content so I can start to perfect the edits. Um, and the power of all this is just unbelievable because you can just go into a particular shot and uh, I can go in and I can tweak his motions if I want to. I can push the camera in a little further or, or pull it back. I can add lighting per cam, you know, per shot. Uh, you really just dial the hell out of everything. So if you find that this is a dramatic moment, you really want to accentuate it beyond what you originally did, you can just do that at this point. So I'll go through the entire piece, kind of dial in all that stuff. Uh, the other cool thing about uh, being able to have this uh, this edit is now when I go to output it, I'm just outputting, you know, one long sort of render uh, and I have to re-render all those cameras to reassemble it in Premiere. I just hit render on, on uh, this one sequence uh, and I've got my final. So that's super awesome. Uh, so then my final pass, I'll kind of do all the high quality render stuff. I'll, I'll render this out, this sequence, and then uh, I go into the back into Premiere, and then that's this guy. So I'll take my final render, I'll drop it on top of everything, uh, and you can see, just from a render standpoint, um, I'm turning his hair on. I animated his ear. I fixed up his his cloth dynamics that just looked kind of weird. And then I think on this guy, I did some better holographic effects and stuff. So. That's basically the fine tuning I did. Um, so in the edit and then for picture. And, uh, and then um, from there, it's really just, I don't do any of the, any color correction or any of that stuff. I do all that stuff using the post-process volume in Unreal, which I love. It's super freaking powerful. Um, and I've even wrote a couple of sort of post-process shaders that, rep, uh, that 
um, replicate what I would normally do in Photoshop with the soft lighting effect to give it a kind of like a film effect and stuff. You can basically do all that stuff uh, in, in post-process, uh, which is great because then you're looking at sort of your final, rend your final piece as you're working, which is amazing. Um, and then sort of for the final, uh, I kind of do all my voice effects and stuff on here, uh, just as, you know, little plugins for, for shifting pitch and stuff. And then I go in and do all the sound design, which is something that I really enjoy doing. It brings the whole story to life uh, and the environment and all these things. And uh, one program I'll share with you guys that I love, uh, it's called Soundly. And uh, it's just, it's basically just a, a organizer for your local library of sound effects. Um, and you can kind of come in here and play sounds. You can search for stuff, obviously. Uh, you can just grab a piece of a sound and then sort of drag it into your timeline, or you can grab the whole thing. Um, you can reverse it, normalize it, uh, do a bunch of other convenient functions. And it even will import the sound right into your sort of Premiere library. Uh, so I have my local library here, and then they also have sort of a growing cloud library that you have access to. Um, so anyway, super cool program, makes, makes all this a lot more fun. It's better than the built-in stuff in Premiere. Um, and it also works with Unreal. So you could actually just um, drag and drop sounds into the Unreal, into Unreal and then drop it on your timeline if you want to. So super cool program. Um, and that's that's kind of that's kind of it in a nutshell uh, as far as this project goes. Um, the one thing again I'll say is I every time I do one of these, I do it a little bit differently. Uh, I try different ways of sort of nesting um, these sequences, um, you know, I try to keep super simple, have the least amount of files uh, to deal with. Um, but at the same time, some of these very simple ways of doing it have limits. Um, so you have to be aware of those. Other, otherwise, you'll get yourself into a jam. Um, and if you need more flexibility, then, you know, you can create or nest more sequences depending on how you want to set it up. Um, but then it kind of exponentially takes more time. So always trying to find that perfect sweet spot of what works for me and, and all that stuff. 